I want to talk a bit about your French side as well, because we in English Canada, we inherited uh, our cultural parents were Britain and the United States. Mm -hmm. And so as young actors, we were, these two big parents were over our shoulders saying, act Shakespeare like the British, and act modern things like the Americans. But as a Quebecer, did you have roots in the classical French tradition from France? Does that influence you as a young actor? Up to a point, yes. I say up to a point, and I will explain later what I mean by that. But definitely, uh, we were very anxious to know what had taken place in France from the beginning of the, of the, of the theatre in the early centuries and at the present time, and taking lesson out of it. But for political reasons, at one point, uh, that relationship with France was cut and we had to develop our own personality without any reference to our mother country. And that was the Quiet Revolution? That was 1950s? Yes, yeah, yeah. 50, 50s, 60s. And we came out with, uh, I think, a very original way of acting uh, which is in a way stronger than what is taking place in France. In France presently the, the trade the trend is to underacting. In Quebec th that's not true. I don't say that we overact, yeah. but we definitely are physically and uh, mentally um, more uh, active. Uh, I, yes, I call it dramatically robust. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, that's right. That's right. It's very full dramatically. Yeah. Whereas we English, uh, not talking about the French, of course, which you say are understated, but the English are, you know, always putting it beneath the surface and making it like television and making film. But we look at Quebec actors, and it's boom, it's there. There's a robustness. Yeah, the, the the word is very well chosen, I think. Because I remember at generally theater, speaking, of course, <coughs> of course, I, I remember the theater school. You know, I'm, as a young English actor, we would go to the the French productions, and our jaws would be on the floor. Like it was so dramatic, it was so full, it was so colorful, and we thought, how do you do that? You know, in our English veins, we couldn't do that, and we thought, yeah, how yeah, how do you yeah. catch that? And I, I remember that. Uh, uh, the second time I came to Stratford in '66, we performed Le Malade Imaginaire at the Avon Theatre. And I was playing uh, Diafoirus, the, the, the son, Diafoirus. And uh, I was taking much fun in doing it. And after the performance, Bruno Gerussi came to me and he said, if I did half what you're doing on stage, I would be uh, told that I'm in ham, etc., etc. So uh, I think that we, we learn not to be ashamed of showing the pleasure we take in acting. And that's part of that uh, robustness, I think. That's the word pleasure. Yeah, oh yes. It is pleasure because the English actor can't seem to show the pleasure of acting. Then we're called, uh, they say, we chew the scenery or we're overly dramatic. But somehow the French actor can show the pleasure. Yeah, and th th that's an essential part of acting, in my opinion. So much so that uh, at one point in, in the 60s, in, in 1963 exactly, I wasn't taking any pleasure in acting. And I left. Uh -huh. I left the stage for three years. I did television, earning money. <laughs> and uh, in 66, I said to myself, I should check if I can take pleasure again in acting. And Jean Gascon was the artistic director of Stratford at that time. And I gave him a ring and I said, Jean, would you need me for the next season? And he said, we're doing Henry V again, so come. And I came and I realized that I was taking pleasure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's essential. 
And I think that if you don't show it to the public, uh, it's not sufficient to take in your own pleasure. It's an egoistical way of taking pleasure. You have to be two in, yeah. in, the, in that uh, act of pleasure. It's very interesting. At least. Yeah. <laughs>